Um, good morning. Thank you for joining us. My name is Dekel, and I run the um, the Cloud Foundry marketing team, product marketing at VMware. And today we're going to walk through uh, getting started with Cloud Foundry. Um, the first uh, thing I'd like you to um, to explore is that um, think about an app that you've just recently deployed or about to deploy and think about the complexity of running this app. How many things you had to do that have nothing to do with your with the actual code that you are building? Uh, how much middleware component you had to configure? Now imagine a world where basically all you need to do is target a specific destination, i.e. a cloud you want to deploy this application to, focus on your code, just write your code, and then push your application. And then any services, any middleware services that you require, like a database, a messaging system, um, something to do with your caching, for example, all you need to do is you need to bind it. So it all runs as a service, and you bind it to your application. And then not only that, when you need to scale, when you finish developing, when you finish your local testing, and you want to scale the application in production, all you're doing is a single API call, and your application scales without you needing to deal with scale individual middleware components and individual stacks. So this is the promise of what we're trying to do with Cloud Foundry. The open path platform as a service that allows you to deploy and scale applications in seconds without locking yourself into a single cloud or a single infrastructure. Simple, open, flexible, and scalable. We'll talk a lot in the upcoming uh, slides about each one of those components. What I'd like you to do in the next 30 minutes is think about your uh, the, your upcoming web application, the one you're about to, to build, the one you are currently building, the one you've just built. Think about the deployment frameworks and the application services you want to use. And then, as I mentioned in the previous slide, think about the complexity of managing this application, uh, anything that has that has nothing to do with the actual code the actual application logic that you're building. Walk with me of the overview slides of Cloud Foundry. Watch the live demo by which we'll walk you step by step from the moment you sign in to the moment to deploying an application and scaling it in multiple language and on multiple clouds. And then think about what it takes to actually take the application you've built and run it on Cloud Foundry. Building it, scaling it, without code changes on your local machine, on your local laptop, or in the cloud. And then most importantly, go sign up and try it. If you go and you sign up today using the promo code cloud today, you will get instantly approved and you will not need to wait in the backlog of user approval that we currently have. And Cloud Foundry is free. It's in beta, uh, beta mode at the moment and you can sign up for free and using the promo code immediately get started. So before we dive in into the um, what Cloud Foundry entails, let's, start, let's think a minute of what's changing right now in applications. There is a couple of important threads, uh, trends I'd like to mention. The first one is that everything now goes into frameworks. So developer productivity and innovation is now around framework to reduce time to market, to focus more on your actual business logic and less on you know, individual components and low-level code. If you think about Spring, Python, Scala, Ruby on Rails, Sinatra, Node.js for mobile development, and more. You get a, a new application types, mobile, social, software as a service. You need to release your applications much more frequently and much faster. Data intensive. I assume you're all familiar with this notion of big data and fast data 
and having uh, uh, requirements for elasticity and no schema. So you need a NoSQL requirement. And you need to deploy it on virtual, physical, or cloud infrastructure. So a lot of things changing for developers are building applications. Now, these trends and these changes in the marketplace basically requires a new type of platform to run application. And that platform is PaaS, or Platform as a Service. And Cloud Foundry, we believe, is the right choice for you to build applications in the cloud. Why is that? First of all, it's simple. It lets you focus on your code and not wiring middleware. We'll talk a little bit about that in the slide, but most important, when, you'll, when I'll do the demo, you will see how you just write your code, deploy it with one API call with a single push command into the cloud, and that's it. Open. So we'll talk a lot about moving between clouds and being open and not locked into a specific infrastructure or a specific set of services or stacks. And that's, that's important because developers want choice. Developers want to write the code in any language that they want, using any service that they want, and deploy it on any infrastructure. Cloud Foundry is open source from day one. We'll talk about what are the frameworks that have been com contributed by the community and why is that important. Flexible and scalable. You can, once you deploy your application, you can manage its life cycle from updates to scale up, to scale down, to start and stop very easily using a simple API call. And what's probably most compelling is when you're doing that, you don't have to do that in the, to each individual middleware component. Now, my background, I'm coming from years of uh, development and engineering in the uh, traditional middleware market. So I had my share of building uh, J2E apps and traditional app servers. And when you're getting to the point of scaling an app that you wrote, and you need to try and scale those silos of middleware components, the database, the messaging, um, the web server, the app server, each tier you need to scale separately that's a huge hurdle that has nothing to do with your development work. And as you've seen in this previous slide, since there's so much changes going on in the marketplace around technologies, frameworks, services, you have to have a system that enables you to digest future cloud innovation and new frameworks coming up. And just as an anecdote, less than 72 hours after we launched Cloud Foundry about a year ago, we had three additional service frameworks added to the, um, to the Cloud Foundry ecosystem by developers in the open source community. And that's what I mean by quickly digest cloud innovation. When we're talking about open paths or open platform as a service, we, we are looking at a combination of three, three things, cloud frameworks and services. Clouds, as you will see in the demo, this is the ability to target any cloud. So when you're building apps with Cloud Foundry and using the Cloud Foundry tools and APIs, the first thing you're doing is you're targeting a cloud. The second, and that cloud can be can run on your laptop with micro cloud, as I'll demo um, in a few minutes. It can run on a public cloud using cloudfoundry.com, a service run by VMware, or AppFog, one of our partners running on EC2, or Tier 3, one of our partners running on uh, a vCloud infrastructure, and many more partners uh, that are building their own instances of Cloud Foundry. So you have a choice of public cloud. And you also have a choice of private cloud, running Cloud Foundry behind, our, behind the firewall, using um, open source bits or partners that are building, productizing Cloud Foundry to run behind the firewall. But the idea is that you can have a choice of clouds when you deploy your apps. Frameworks. When you're pushing your application, you are not tied into a specific language. So, so when you, you build your application in a variety of languages, if it's Spring Java, if it's Node, if it's Ruby on Rails, if it's Scala, and more. And when you push your application, the 
platform, the Cloud Foundry basically detects what kind of app it is, what it was, what kind of framework you wrote it in, and decides accordingly which kind of middleware component to instantiate for you. And you will see that clearly in the demo, so I'll, I'll leave it at that notion for now. Bind, services, very important. Any app needs its runtime, but also needs its, its services. Again, the databases, messaging, so on. With Cloud Foundry, the ability to leverage, to consume services is always using the as a service model, which means you are not going and starting a database. You're basically saying, I want to bind my app to an instance of MySQL. I want to bind my app to an instance of Postgres, which make your development work, deployment work, and lifecycle management much easier. And last but not least, uh, we believe that any software in the cloud era has to be open source. Cloud Foundry is open source for day one, from day one, and available at GitHub slash Cloud Foundry. Two of the uh, offerings that VMware has today that you, you, you will see in the demo is cloudfoundry.com and, and microcloud. Cloudfoundry.com is uh, a multi-tenant PaaS operated by VMware, so it's a public cloud service based on the Cloud Foundry technology. It's currently in beta, as I said. The frameworks that are supported are Spring and Java, Grails, Ruby on Rails and Ruby on Sinatra, Node.js, Scala, and Lyft, and more to come. Services that you have out of the box today are RabbitMQ for messaging, MongoDB for NoSQL, a very popular NoSQL database, Redis for key value store, MySQL and PostgreSQL for a choice of relational databases. So what you will see, cloudfoundry.com again is available today as a beta service. During the demo, you will see how you sign up for free and immediately getting started pushing your applications. Another offer uh, another channel to basically consume Cloud Foundry, and this is this is for developers. So a developer tool called Micro Cloud Foundry, which is the first downloadable PaaS in the industry, and it's currently supporting the same frameworks and services as CloudFoundry.com, and can run on your laptop or PC. And it's actually you know you can take a USB key. It has all the bits, the entire PaaS, using Fusion or Workstation. You can run it. Um, on your Mac or on your PC, and we'll see that I have it installed here on my Mac, and you will you'll see how I can push the exact same code, the exact same app, to CloudFoundry.com, a public cloud with you know thousands of nodes, and the same way it works exactly the same way on my local laptop. Let's talk a little bit about the community and the open source project and why it's so important. As you've seen in the previous slide, cloudfoundry.com offers a certain uh, number of services and frameworks, but many more, and this is just a partial list, many more are available on GitHub as part of the open source um, code. So .NET, PHP, JRuby, Python, Clojure, Erlang, services like Memcached, SQL Server, uh, CouchDB, and more. All of these services and frameworks have been contributed by developers on GitHub to the Cloud Foundry project and are available to you if you want to use the open source bits. Basically, take the open source bits and, and use it yourself. And uh, about uh, a few weeks ago, on April 11th, uh, we had our anniversary event. And in that event, we announced um, a new and improved way to contribute code to, cloud, to the Cloud Foundry project, uh, which makes those, this interaction with the development team and with the open source project much easier. And again, to, in, to encourage the ecosystem around the path. Um, to use cloudfoundry.org, to basically use the open source, you download the code, you set up your environment, you use a variety of tool chains of scripts, whether it's Chef or uh, we recently released uh, an open source, something that we call Cloud Foundry Bosch, which allow you to build your own instance of Cloud Foundry uh, in a, at a larger scale. 
and deploy it uh, behind the firewall. So just, just to give you a sense of Cloud Foundry is not about, it's not just about cloudfoundry.com from VMware, and it's not just about a single service or a single framework. This is really a broad industry investment with a lot of partners um, and a variety of solutions. And we, we believe this is the promise behind an, a true open path, that you have an ecosystem of services, frameworks, and destination of deployment. I talked a little bit about multi-cloud, and I'd like to spend uh, a minute or two on, on explaining why is this so important. If you remember the triangle from the, the first slide, the so open path is around your choice of frameworks, clouds, and services. When we're saying choice of clouds, it means that when you choose your paths, you don't choose where you deploy your application. If you look at what's, you know, at other solutions in the marketplace, basically you are locking yourself into a single vendor. So when you're choosing on building your application using a certain path solution, you're basically forced to make the decision of, I, I have to deploy this on the infrastructure that this path runs on. And we believe that shouldn't be the case, that developers actually want to leverage, uh, to write their code and push it to wh whenever, wherever they, they want. If it's on their own laptops, if it's on their private clouds or on their public clouds. And what's, what's even more important is you don't want to make that choice when you're, when you're writing your code. You're writing your code, you deploy it first on a micro cloud maybe. And then you want to deploy it, you want to scale it on a public cloud, and you want to run it production behind the firewall um, on your private cloud. And when you're moving all of, when you're moving between those phases in the app lifecycle, you don't want to rewrite your application. And unfortunately today, in many of the PaaS providers out there, what happens is when you want to move your application from one environment to the other, you basically have to rewrite it or invest a lot of effort in, in making changes, sometimes actual architectural changes, uh, to move your app. As you will see in the demo today, with Cloud Foundry, you literally you don't change a single line of code. You can actually wire different services. We'll see an example where on the micro cloud, I'm running MySQL, and on, the, on cloudfoundry.com, I'm using Postgres. Two different databases, and I'm not even changing my code. When you grow, so before that, like when you, you, another reason you want to move between clouds is compliance and geographical needs, right? And so if you need a cloud that answers your uh, compliance better than, than another, you, you want to be flexible and move between those infrastructure. You want to manage your growth, accommodate peak loads, and optimize costs, again, without being locked in into a single cloud that can suddenly raise its prices 500% and you're basically locked in and you cannot move anywhere else. So we believe multi-cloud flexibility is critical. It's critical for your long-term success. And the, one of the major benefits of Cloud Foundry is that can, it can run on uh, different types of infrastructure. Speaking of which, when we're saying multi-cloud, this is a reality today. This is not a slide. So all of these we have a choice, you have a choice of distributor that can take Cloud Foundry with you uh, behind the firewall, a choice of management and deployment solution, and a choice of public cloud operators. So we mentioned AppFog that currently runs on, on Amazon, cloudfoundry.com that runs on a v, on VMware solution, um, Pass.io, Tier 3 that runs on, on the vCloud infrastructure. And we've recently also, uh, when we released uh, Cloud Foundry Bosch, there is, there is efforts with uh, um, Piston Lab, um, with Piston to run it on OpenStack. So again, a choice of different infrastructure solutions. So I think this is the last slide before we move to the demo. Um, what do we see, what are the popular use cases we see out there? And again, think about your recent web application. So we see people building mobile and social applications on Cloud Foundry. We see a lot of dev test trial. And what this icon is trying to show is that since it's so easy to push your app, update your app, push another app, you, you don't need to wait for infrastructure. You can scale up and down. 
you can have a lot of dev test trial and come up with the right solutions quickly. Modernization of existing applications and extension, extension of existing SaaS applications, also major use cases we see. I'll skip that for now and I'll, I'd like to move to the demo. So what we'll, what we'll see is um, we'll run through two different types of apps. One that has, uh, based on Java and Spring, using uh, an ID, the Spring Source Tool Suite, the Eclipse-based ID, and another one, a Node.js application, and we'll have a little fun with um, chatting with each other. So I'll share my desktop. So this is the cloudfoundry.com uh, website, and this is where it, it's all starting. Um, dub, 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 cloudfoundry.com. The first step is you click the sign up button, you put your email. Here you can also put the promo code Cloud Today. You click sign up and you get an email with your credential immediately. Once you got your credential, the first thing you'd like to do is install the what we call the VMC client. Cloud Foundry today has two developer tools that you can interact with. One is the VMC command line tool and the other is uh, the Spring Source Tool Suite or an Eclipse-based ID. You can also use, uh, we open source the Cloud Foundry plugin so you can use different type of IDs if you want. Installing the VMC client is as simple as doing gem install VMC. It's a Ruby, uh, it's a Ruby gem. Um, if you're on a Mac, you don't need to do anything. If you're on Windows, you'll have to install uh, Ruby gem from the Ruby gem website. You're doing gem install VMC and you're done. And then since I already have this installed, the third thing you'd like to do is target api.cloudfoundry.com. What this command does, target is a very important command. It tells this, the VMC client on which cloud am I running right now. I'm gonna run on, on cloudfoundry.com and then I'm gonna run on a micro cloud. So if I'm doing target API, API is the endpoint to which I'm connecting. You'll probably want to change your password. You'll put in the temp temporary password you got in the email, uh, the email from us when you signed up. I'm pretty happy with my password, so we'll move on. The second step is basically when you're going in, you're doing login. So I'm going to use a demo account, cloudfoundry at gmail.com. And I'm putting my password. And I can see that if I'm doing the v all the commands that I'm going to show in the demo are only a partial list of the VMC command that you can use with vmc-help. We're not going to go over all of them. So you can always tap vmc-help and get, get information on each one of the commands. And if you'll go to our um, start, the, uh, sorry, docs.cloudfoundry.com, you can find all of the getting started and videos and all the materials you need to, to get started. If you look at your account, you basically have a certain quota. Uh, in, the, in the beta service, it's two gigabytes of memory, up to 16 services and 20 apps more than enough for what we need for the demo. So the first part that I want to show you is, this is the Spring Source Tool Suite. This is the um, Spring IDE based on Eclipse. I've set up two instances, two um, um, proxies, two clouds. One is the micro cloud and the other one is cloudfoundry.com. To, to install my micro cloud, what I need to do is go back to this website Click Get Micro Cloud Foundry. Log in with my credentials. Download and install. When I install, I'll need either VMware Player, which is free, or VMware Workstation for Windows. And if I'm on Linux or if I'm on Mac, I can run VMware Fusion. Once you install it with a few simple steps, you'll get something like this. This is my Micro Cloud running. You can see it's actually in offline mode right now, so I can connect to it from a plane. Um, we're not going to go over that, that part. It's very simple to configure. 
using a few simple steps and I can actually work on the plane. The cool thing is that everything that I'm running from now on is can run, it can run exactly the same on microcloud or on cloudfoundry.com. So what we'll start with is we'll take a, a, a Spring application based on Spring Roo, which is um, an online bookstore, a simple demo app. And we'll first deploy it on microcloud, local here on my laptop. We'll call it book. The application type is Spring. So if you remember when we talked about this open path idea and multi-framework, so um, the um, system automatically de detects that this application is Spring type, and it can also be Grails, Lyft, or Java Web. In this case, it's a Spring application. Since I'm deploying to my micro cloud, I also have an option of debugging the application. A recent feature we added, pretty cool, that allowed me to basically put breakpoints and actually debug the application while I'm developing it. In this case, let's assume I finished the development and I just want to do some unit testing, so we'll run it. And what is a bookstore without a place to store books? So I can add services. We'll call it um, testdb because we're currently running in testing mode, and we'll select MySQL in this case. Now, back to, back to what I talked about in the slides, the notion of open paths and bind services. I'm not installing anything here. I'm not configuring any databases. I'm not doing connection strings. It's all been abstracted from me as a developer, helping me to focus on my code. What the system does right now, it actually deploys the, um, deploys the code, bind the service, and now if we'll go to a website and write the, uh, you know, go to this URL here and call it books.micro.offline, because this is the URL. Again, everything running on my local machine here. We'll have this app running. So you'll see a demo. Um, this is my bookstore, and I can create new books and it's all stored in this local database. And I can read my, see the list of books that I have. Now, this is a full-blown web application with a database, a UI. Um, I can even go and, and log into that database using a feature we, we announced called, called, called tunneling. Um, and you can read more about it in our blog. So I can actually go back, go here. I'm not going to demo it today, but I can do VMC tunnel. So, so before that, I'll do VMC apps. So you can see that I'm having the, this books actually running. Um, sorry. What I forgot to do is go back to my micro cloud. Remember, I was targeted to cloudfunding.com, which I don't have anything running there yet. So if I'll do VMC apps right now, which list all my running apps, you can see that I have the books application, which we just deployed, perfectly healthy. This is the URL, and it's using a test DB, which is the service that we deployed, and I can do something like VMC tunnel test DB and actually log into that database using a SQL client or whatever client I want to further test my data. Now, the nice thing about this is that about this multi-cloud notion is now I can take the exact same application, again, this book application, I didn't do a single code change, and I can drag and drop it in exactly the same way to cf.com, VMware-operated Cloud Foundry service. In the same way, I could have drag and drop it to AppFog, to Tier 3, to any other public cloud that runs Cloud Foundry. In this case, I will call it Books May. Again, it detects that this is a Spring application. And this time, I'm actually going to use a different database. So let's say we finished our testing in the micro cloud and now we want to scale it on cloudfoundry.com, scale the application with a different type of database. And this time we'll call it ProdDB for the sake of production database. And we're gonna choose, not MySQL, we're gonna choose Postgres. Click Finish. And now what happens is I'm deploying this to a different cloud, cloudfoundry.com, and I'm even bounded to a different database. And not only that, I'm going to double click here 
and I'm going to tell the application, if you see on this window, I want to run it two instances, not one, because this is a production application for, for the sake of demo. So different database, twice the amount of instances, scaled without doing any code changes, and all of that using drag and drop or API calls, let me focus on my app. And now if we'll go back to the browser, I'll do books, may, cloudfoundry.com. So here is my book application. Now it's running on cloudfoundry.com, different cloud. Before it was running on micro.offline, my local database. Same way I could have run, uh, apped it on appfog.aws. And now it's using a different database. I can add my, uh, my real book. Real me. Save. So you can see the list. So you can see that it's actually running now with two separate instances uh, on cloudfoundry.com, a public cloud with a much higher capacity. Okay, let's do another quick example. So we've seen how it works with Sprint uh, using an IDE. Now let's use a Node.js, simple Node.js application called Chat. It's based on the, um, the a very popular Node um, sample app, um, which is very, Node is a JavaScript based uh, language that helps, uh, very popular in writing mobile application. And for those of you who are familiar with Node, uh, this is how, how a standard code looks like, a .js file, so there's a bunch of .js files um, here and some, uh, a bit of um, HTML. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy this on my micro cloud. Let's just make sure that I'm targeted to my micro cloud. If you're not sure, you can always do VMC info and you see exactly where your target, what version you're running and how much capacity you have left. So I'm going to do VMC push, my chat. VMC push is the equivalent of the tag, the drag and drop that we did in STS before. So we're basically doing the equivalent of drag and dropping right now from a different client. Current directory, yes. So again, now it detected a different framework. Before that it was Spring, now it's Node. This is the URL that I want to deploy, yes. Memory is fine. How many instances? For now we'll just go with one. I want to bind an existing service, yes. So the bind is the equivalent of what we did when we added services. So, oops, sorry. I don't want to bind to an existing service. I want to bind to a new service. So let's do quickly do this again. So it asked me if it wants me to create a new service. This is the list of services that I have available. I will choose Redis, a very popular open source key value store. We'll call it chat repo. I don't want to create another. It always it lets me save this configuration for later use using a manifest file. For now, I don't want to do that. Not enough capacity. Oh, okay. So because I'm running on my my micro cloud is limited with capacity. So let's for a minute let's stop the delete the books application that we had here. So now you can see uh, a live example of how to delete all of your apps. So we can have capacity. And we'll quickly push this again. Live demos, it's always fun. We want to choose Redis, let's call it chat repo. That's it, one is enough. Oh, okay, sorry. So anyway, so let, let's, let's, uh, um, doesn't want to let me, my chat too. 
last try and then we'll move on. But hopefully that will work. Okay, finally we're there. All of these were uh, human errors. So now the my chat is running, my chat too. If I'll go here, micro dot offline. Yay, here we go. Finally, we're there. So here's a simple chat app. Never give up. We're good. Okay, so now let's do the exact same thing quickly so you can all participate. Let's deploy this app on cloudfoundry.com. So for that, we want to do the first thing we want to do VMC target api.cloudfoundry.com. So now we're back into our public cloud. So this ability to move between clouds or basically decouple the cloud that you're deploying from your code is very, very important and very valuable by developers that are using Cloud Foundry. So we'll do the same VMC push. I could have used in the, uh, like, you know, the manifest at this point and not do this all over again. See, this time the URL is mychat.cloudfoundry.com. This time we're going to do we don't want to buy an existing service. We'll use Redis again. We'll call it public chat public repo. And this time you all can, can join the chat. So if you go to mychat2.cloudfoundry.com, instead of micro.offline, now it's a public URL that you can all join. And let's see if someone is on the chat or I'm on my own. So if, you, if you'll join the chat, you'll see that there is you know, we, we can chat together. And basically the same, the same idea is that you can deploy the exact same application, public or private or micro, without doing any code changes. So with that, I'll stop sharing. So key takeaways as so hopefully by now you understand the value of using Cloud Foundry and how simple it is, is to just sign up, take your application, Spring, Node, Rails, Ruby, Scala, push it to this to this cloud infrastructure and basically have it cloud pass and basically have it running in minutes for you without wiring middleware without configuring web servers, app servers, database. And not only that, you can do it on your laptop, to laptop and then move it to a public cloud environment without a single code changes. What's next? So first and foremost, go sign up. Get the source, look at, if you're interested, look at the source code in .org. Download your micro cloud. Go to our blog. There is a lot of information. We've, I've mentioned a few of our recent announcements. There are many more. Uh, read it on our blog. Go to start at sorry docs.cloudfoundry.com. Um, look at the documentation. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, that's where we're doing most of our um, you know every announcement, every communication that is important. You'll see there. And try and give us feedback. Thank that's you for joining us.